How do you do? Because his father belittled and rejected him, the man in this story bottled up his feelings. Ironically, he collected old bottles and found one valued at more than a thousand dollars. But that didn't compare with the priceless treasure he found when his heart and mind and life were unshackled. Illuminating the path of life, this is Unshackled, True Life Stories dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Sorrow often blankets homeless people, sorrow at their present circumstance, and sorrow about the past. Pacific Garden Mission offers the way to change their present and their future. The Old Lighthouse offers nourishing meals, showers and fresh clothing, and a safe place to sleep at night. All because generous friends send financial gifts to keep the doors open and the light burning. Mission pastors and counselors help remove the blanket of the sorrow of the world, instead covering the guests with the truth that makes them free, the truth that brings life everlasting. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. That's the mission goal. Now for broadcast around the earth. Here is program number 3298 in the series, Unshackled. The program that makes you face yourself and think. Hello. Dad, it's Harlan. What do you want, Harlan? I couldn't get into the house this morning. The key doesn't work. Yeah, well, I changed the locks. Well, that's where I have my clock repair business, Dad. Eh, well, I sold the house to your cousin. You, you got two weeks to get your stuff out of there. Two weeks? Yeah, you heard me. I grew up in that house, and there's a lot of my things inside. Where will I put them? I don't know. That's your problem. Not a very loving relationship between father and son. And a frayed bond would snap completely. This is the conclusion of the true testimony of Harland Eastwood, right now on Unshackled. I still hadn't told my dad how I'd given my life to Jesus, how I'd read the entire New Testament one night instead of ending my life as I had planned. Dad didn't know a lot of things about me because he'd rejected me for years, even though I was his only child. Dad was antagonistic to God, so I visited Mom's pastor and told him about my transformed life. What an awesome God we have, Harlan. I just wish Mom knew. If only I'd been saved while she was alive. Oh, she knows. The Bible says, There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And she's there with the angels. You talked about heaven at a funeral service, and I didn't have a clue how to get there. Well, people in this church have been praying for you for a long time. Hey, why don't you give your testimony here on Sunday? I gave my testimony, telling people how I'd always felt like a failure, how my two marriages had failed, how I'd attempted suicide once and even failed at that. And then Jesus transformed my life. He even cleaned up my foul language. I kept telling others about Christ, and I met with my pastor in Seattle, learning more about God's word and purpose for my life. Sometimes we went to lunch, and sometimes he took the church secretary along. You sure are excited about the Lord, Harlan. It's wonderful. Well, I was worried it wouldn't last, so I decided to ask the oldest person in the congregation if it wears off. Yes, that would be Mildred. She's 86. She was my ninth grade English teacher and tough as nails. What did she tell you? That she had been saved when she was 15. 71 years serving the Lord. She said, if you think you're excited now, just wait. It only gets better. <laughs> She's right. I've been visiting old friends after the worship service and telling them the sermon. Mm, you remember the sermon that well? Complete with references. <laughs> you have a good memory. Well, a gift from God, I guess. Anyway, last Sunday, when I finished repeating the sermon, 
My friend's wife told me not to come back if that's all I had to talk about. Light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Well, the good news is, I led both my daughters to the Lord. I hadn't seen much of my daughters since their mother left me, but my daughters grew in the Lord. Though I was no longer welcome at my friend's house, my old friend often came to visit me. Each time I shared my faith and the truth of Scripture, and each time he reminded me that he had everything he needed. I failed to persuade him, and the church secretary, Marilyn, commiserated with me. He doesn't need the Lord, yet. No, he has a beautiful wife, his own company, and all the money he needs to buy whatever he wants. He told me he doesn't need a crutch. What can I do? Pray, Harland. His mind is hardened with pride. It's so obvious to me that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why can't he see? People are blind to the truth until God opens their eyes. How true. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. Pray for him. I do. Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. I have a lot of friends like that. They put up walls of resistance. You know what Jesus said? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Our job is to sow the imperishable seed, the Word of God. The Holy Spirit does the rest. I was learning that you can lead people to the living water, but you can't make them drink it. I began teaching Sunday school classes and going to a men's breakfast that had Christian speakers. One of the speakers was a county sheriff whose stories reminded me of the times I had been on the wrong side of the law. Afterward, I spoke with my pastor. I'm going to talk with the sheriff. I've collected bottles with a man who might have had a hitman take out his wife. She disappeared and was never seen again. Why do you think he was involved? Because when my wife left and took all my possessions, he suggested I do the same. But I didn't listen to him. Oh, don't be hasty, Harlan. You better pray about this. I'm on the right side of the law now, Pastor. I want to help them find his missing wife. Well, they might implicate you. I'll trust in the Lord. I shared what I knew with the authorities and let them carry the ball. I was living in my dad's house where I was refurbishing an old roll-top desk. I still had a clock repair business, so people came to my door from time to time to drop off or pick up clocks. One night, I answered a knock to find my nefarious friend who had often described shady dealings to me. I hadn't seen him since I was saved. Hey, hey, what are you up to, Harlan? Oh, refurbishing a roll-top desk. Oh, wow, you're doing a good job. I like it. Well, I like to work with my hands, restoring things. Say, would you like to mass-produce these? I could, I could find his buyers and, and turn a good profit. I don't care about getting rich anymore, Jim. What? what? Now, how can you not care? I care about the things of God now, the souls of men and women. We all need the Lord. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What happened to you? I'm born again. I wanted to die when Abby left me. Instead, God saved me and gave me eternal life. I read the entire New Testament one night and haven't been the same since. Well, you can say that again. It blew me away when I realized how much God loves me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Huh. You know, the same thing happened to my best friend in Oklahoma. Maybe there's something to this. Not something. Someone. Jesus Christ. He can make you a new man, Jim. Give him your life. Yeah, well, I have to go, but I'll call you. I never heard from him again, but I heard about him many years later. Meanwhile, 
I was falling in love with Marilyn and asked her to marry me. I cried tears of joy after the ceremony. We honeymooned along the Oregon coast and returned to live in her house, but I still used Dad's house for my clock business. Then, without telling me, he sold the house to a cousin. That's when I called him. It's none of your business if I sell the house. Dad, if I'd known you wanted to sell, I might have bought the house. <laughs> I wouldn't sell it to you. Why not? You'd ruin it. Now, now get your stuff and get out. I need to have a yard sale and get rid of some things. Yeah, well, I want to be there just to make sure that you don't sell what doesn't belong to you. The day of the yard sale came, and I was nervous and yet excited about telling my dad about my faith in the Lord. Well, I don't see any more of my stuff mingled with yours. So... Dad, there's something I want to tell you. Make it quick. I have to go. I'm a born-again Christian. Jesus has changed my life, Dad. I read the Bible and go to church and even teach Sunday school, and it's the greatest thing. I don't to... know what you've gotten yourself into, but I don't want any part of it. But, Dad... Didn't but... I warn you? All your life I warned you. Don't get mixed up with the church. <laughs> I might have known you. You'd go and do something like this. You never did have any sense. You should get away from that place as fast as you can. Sorry you feel that way, but I can't desert Jesus. He died to save me. Yeah, you get your things and I'll get mine. You go your way and I'll go mine. I never want to see you again. Dad was unforgiving, but I had no idea how far he would go to get revenge for what he saw as my betrayal. Stay close to hear how this breach between Harland and his dad would end. Now, though, here is Pacific Garden Missions President, Phil Kwiatkowski. Thanks, Timothy. All the latest. That's what you get with the PGM News, our newsletter about Pacific Garden Mission that arrives once a month in your mailbox if you request a subscription. The PGM News is colorful, concise, and completely free. Everything you wanted to know about the Yule Lighthouse is revealed each month in stories and insightful articles about the people or ministries the mission helps. In-depth articles about the men's and women's division, the Bread of Life ministry, behind the scenes of Unshackled, all are revealed in the PGM News. The kind of help we give, the volunteers, the lives before and after someone seeks hope at the mission, all can be found in the PGM News. Reading our newsletter, you feel that the people are part of your family. And they are when you're a part of God's family. You'll love the pictures. So don't miss out on a single issue. Write and ask for your free subscription to the PGM News. The address is Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Marilyn and I made friends with a couple who also collected old bottles, but they were not believers, so I told them about Jesus, and they invited me to bring my Bible and explain more. I did for many evenings over the course of nearly a year, but they didn't pray to receive Christ. I was discouraged, so I went to see a Christian counselor. You've gone over the plan of salvation, Harlan? Yeah. I told them that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I've explained the doctrine of sin, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I've explained that Jesus is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. I've even explained how to get to heaven and the consequence of rejecting Christ, eternity in hell and separated from God. Sounds like you've been very thorough. You expected them to accept Christ? Yes. I feel like I failed. God's timing is not ours, so don't be discouraged. God has a purpose in your work of faith. Isaiah chapter 55 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Pray for them and wait on the Lord. Well, I have no choice but to end the Bible studies. Hello? 
Hey, it's Harlan, and I have good news. Oh, you sound excited, Harlan. I am. Just as I was wrapping up the Bible study with my friends, their son asked if he could pray to receive Christ. Their son? How old is he? Oh, about 25. He lives at home and didn't even seem interested in the Bible study. But he was hearing the Word, and faith comes by hearing. He mostly stayed in another room while we talked. I was surprised because I hadn't even been praying for him. But he prayed to receive Christ. Well, God knew. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. I was still teaching Bible studies in church, and we had been married about three years when I was asked to fill in for a man who preached at a small church in a nearby town. I studied the Bible continuously until the big day, and I was scared, but I preached. Galatians chapter 6 exhorts us, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, the couple that I just described split up recently, and my friend was driving to his hometown in Mississippi when he pulled the truck over to the side of the road and asked Christ to save him. So I was glad I shared the gospel with him. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days, the Bible says. And we know that the bread of life is the Lord Jesus Christ. Marilyn was still working at the church office, but our expenses were greater than our income. So she took a job with the machinery company. She had to work longer hours just to finish her tasks, and her blood pressure rose with the stress. I quit my job, Harlan. Just like that? I couldn't take it anymore. The doctor told me to find other work or face a heart attack. I'll look for a job that pays more than clock repairing, honey. I'm sorry, Harlan. It's my place to provide for us. There aren't any calls for a clock maker, but I'll find something. In the meantime, we'll cut expenses. I found work delivering and setting up grandfather clocks. I also repaired clocks for several furniture stores. God provided for us just as he promises in Philippians chapter 4. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Dad still hadn't forgiven me, but he dropped off items that he had discarded. Among them was an old letter from mom's family in Europe written in Russian. That letter stirred an interest in Mom's hometown of Ritzville. So Marilyn and I went to visit a cousin there and stopped by the old family home. So this was your grandparents' home? Great-grandparents. I hope they don't mind our dropping by unannounced. Uh, I'm Harlan Eastwood, and I'm the great-grandson of the man who built this house. We live in Seattle, and I wonder if we could tour the house. Well, yeah, sure. Uh, We don't live here. We've just been fixing it up to sell. Five years ago, I wrote a book about my great-grandparents, and it has pictures of this house. I have a copy with me. Well, I'd like to see those pictures. Man, I wish I had known. I would have liked to buy it. Well, somebody's already made an offer. But why don't you leave your phone number just in case the deal falls through? Several months passed, and I forgot the house. One night, just as we sat down to dinner, the phone rang. I presumed it was a sales call. How do you want to pay for your new house? Who is this? (laughs) Oh, this is Dave. Remember the man who owns your great-grandparents' home in Ritzville? Oh! Yeah, well, it turns out the other family couldn't get a loan, so you're next on my list. You're still interested, aren't you? (laughs) Am I ever? Okay, good. Well, I'll need a small down payment to hold the property, but then I'll have to have that balance in a month. I'll come up with the down payment in a couple of weeks. Marilyn and I prayed, asking God to help us buy the old family home. We knew we wouldn't qualify for a bank loan, so we needed divine intervention. But Christ is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Driving our bright yellow sport coupe that I had restored, we met them for the down payment. 
Dave liked the car so much, he took the car instead of the money we brought. We agreed to meet them in two weeks at the Ritzville Courthouse with the rest of the money. How do we raise the rest of the money, Harlan? Well, for one thing, I can sell my old Model A Ford pickup. Oh, but you've had that truck for 30 years. It's part of the family. Not like my great-grandparents' house. That still won't be enough money. No, but I can sell my filter manufacturing business. In two weeks? With God, all things are possible, honey. We better pray and pray hard. We prayed, and I told everyone I met about the truck and the business for sale, but God was silent. A few days later, I invited a friend to go bottle hunting on the Green River. Wading in the shallow water, we split up, and he went down river from me. Soon I saw an amber bottle near the bank, and I moved closer. I held my breath as I picked it up, hoping the name of the brewery was embossed on the bottle, making it more valuable. It was a rare old bottle from Portland, dating back to 1889. Bob, come see what I found! The bottle was in perfect condition, and word spread. A collector offered me $1,000 and a gold pocket watch for the bottle. A few days later, I took my collection of bottles to a show and sold the whole lot for another $1,000. But we still hadn't sold my business or the Model A. Then, a cousin bought the antique pickup, bringing us closer to our goal. The night before we were to meet at the courthouse, a man wanted to see my filter manufacturing business. He spent more than an hour looking at my equipment and list of customers, then he pulled out a wad of cash and counted out the bills. We had the money to buy the house. God is so faithful. He's never late. Are you ready for the trip to Richfield tomorrow? Yes. Now, there's no running water, so I'll take a couple of five-gallon jugs of water. Now the real work begins. I like to restore things, Marilyn. We closed on the house, and it was ours. But years of hard work lay ahead. The house had no heat and no electricity, as well as no running water. Many of the old windows had been boarded up. There were mounds of dirt everywhere as the house had sat empty for decades. Several years passed. Those windows look great, Harlan. The place looks better and better. Because you keep using authentic materials from old houses. Old houses, old friends. Hey, you know that man I told you about who might have had a hitman do away with his wife? Yes. Well, his second wife also disappeared, and the police found her body. They issued a warrant for his arrest and found him dead on an old logging road, hooked a hose to his muffler. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I would hate to face judgment without Christ. Oh, by the way, I called my dad and he didn't seem to recognize my voice. Really? Oh, that's sad. I told him it was Harlan, his son, and he said he didn't have a son. Then he hung up. A few weeks later, my father suddenly died. His will stipulated that Marilyn couldn't come to his funeral, so I decided not to go either. He seemed to hate Marilyn more than he hated me. My oldest daughter called the day before the service to say she was looking forward to seeing me. When I explained why we wouldn't be there, she intervened and called later. What did she say, Harlan? We can go to the funeral after all. But it's tomorrow morning. And we live on the other side of the state. We'll have to drive all night to arrive in time for the morning ferry to Lopez Island. Are you sure you can drive all night? Yes. I'm glad you decided to go. God tells us to honor thy father and thy mother. I must always seek to obey God. We reached the island and had breakfast with my daughters. We even picked wild tulips to decorate the church. But the funeral service was lacking. No hymns no scripture, and no comforting hope of life after death. But when my father's complete will came in the mail, I was shocked. Does it actually say I wasn't allowed at the funeral? Yeah. He left his Lopez Island house and waterfront property to his sister's daughter. The same one who bought the family house in Seattle? Did he leave you anything? My grandfather's gun, 
and a few thousand dollars in a bank CD, also a few clocks he had collected. Don't feel bad, Harlan. You have an inheritance from your father in heaven. Listen to this, Marilyn. Dad left me a cemetery plot next to Mom on Lopez Island, but I have to use it within a year. It reverts to Dad's estate. That's crazy. I will never understand why he was so hateful to me. When a root of bitterness springs up, it defiles many, the Bible says. He didn't understand the grace of God. Forgive him, Harland. Forgiving is commanded by God, and with God, nothing is impossible. Marilyn and I opened a small clock and antique shop in Ritzville until we retired. Marilyn went to be with the Lord last year. I still repair clocks at home and write on different subjects, mostly historical and biographical. God has accomplished many things in my life. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. In Zechariah chapter 4. Listening friend, do you have God's Holy Spirit to guide and strengthen you each day? Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, except the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn from your sin to him and pray with us now. Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus rose from the dead and lives to save me now. Save me, Lord. Come into my life and change me. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for the gift of eternal life in Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us know you prayed, and we'll send you some literature to help you in your spiritual endeavor. The address is Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. The telephone number in Chicago, 312-492-9410. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry www.unshackle.org This is program number 3298 Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. We'd love to know how these dramas impact your life, so please write soon. The address is Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. You may call Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago and talk with someone who cares. 312-492-9410 Someone is waiting for your call. 312-492-9410